Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this caps off my run of doing all the Tremors movies reviews. This is for Tremors 6, A Cold Day in Hell. And this won't be the last one because we're actually going to get, supposedly, if everything still stays the way it's it's been planned out, from what I've read, we will get a seventh Tremors movie this year, October. So we will see about that. And it, that one is supposed to be called... Mm -mm -mm, where is it island fury tremor 7 island fury and yes the most important thing has been confirmed which is michael gross will be in the film i don't know to what degree maybe just as a small role maybe as a much larger role because as we know from tremor 6 cold day in hell it looks like they're trying to hand the mantle over to jamie kennedy as travis um, to be the new Burt Gummer, so to speak. But we'll talk a little bit more about that. But I'm excited that there's going to be another one. Even though A Cold Day in Hell, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because this is one of the worst ones. Uh, I don't know if I like, if I dislike this one more than number four because number four was like my lowest one. I don't know. They're, they're pretty close for me, but yeah. So anyway, uh, this is my last review for the movies, but I'm also going to be doing a review for the TV show, which I found out is available on YouTube, so stay tuned for that one. So this one's directed by Don Michael Paul, who also did Tremors 5 Bloodlines, which if you didn't see my review on that, it's available on the channel. I did like that one. That was a good kind of return to form after the disappointment of Tremors 4, uh, The Legend Begins. This was written by John Welpley and John Welpley only. This is the very first time there's ever been a Tremor script that was written by one person, and that's an interesting thing. Now, Welpley was involved in the, the scripts for Tremors 3, Back to Perfection, which is interesting because there are some story ties back to Tremors 3 specifically and some ways they reference that film. So it makes sense that that's why it was referenced so much is the guy who wrote the script also wrote that script. And he also worked on the script for Tremors 5 Bloodlines. So he was involved with two of the good scripts. So the fact that this script was actually not that great was even more of a letdown. Because going into it when I saw, oh, John Welpley, this could be good because he did 3 and 5. Now, not so good in my opinion. It's not the wor like, It's not the worst thing ever. Like There was some stuff to enjoy with it, and I'll talk about that. But for the most part, just not that good. Um, so Michael Gross is back in this one, which is the most important part, as we know, if you're a Tremors fan, and Jamie Kennedy is back as Travis, which I thought he was good in Tremors 5 Bloodlines, but he's annoying in this one. It's like they amped his character up. I think the writing of his character was amped up a little bit, and, and Jamie Kennedy played him more like hyper and like in your face, and I think maybe part of that is because they needed his personality to rise up because they're trying to make him the new Burt Gummer so he kind of needed to kind of match the machismo and the loud mouth aspect of Burt Gummer but it just seems like overboard and on top of that it actually seems like they went overboard with the kind of back and forth between Burt and Travis especially in the beginning of the film it does calm down a little bit as they go further into it but the very beginning like the the back and forth they're having just ribbing each other a, it's not actually funny when it's supposed to be funny, and B, it just goes on way too long. It's like one of those jokes that they just keep trying to throw at you where it's just like, here's the joke. Oh, did you not laugh at it this time? Let me just tell it to you again. Oh, did you not laugh now? Let me just tell it to you again. They just beat it to death. And that's one of the things that really turned me off early in this film was their back and forth. Um, that needed to be reined in quite a bit. And Jamie Kennedy's character, Travis, needed to be reined in quite a bit. Um, the original filming for this film was actually supposed to be done in the mountains of Bulgaria, so yes, it was actually going to be done in a colder climate, so there would have been actual snow. Now, they couldn't do that because, for some crazy natural reason, uh, Bulgaria ended up having the worst blizzard they've ever had, and therefore they couldn't film there, so what did they do? They needed to adapt because they still needed to make the film. They went back to South Africa to film, so in the beginning when it looks like it's the mountains and it's, you know, snow, it's sand, and with CG, they just made it look like it was snow, which if you're watching it, you can tell. Like, you can definitely tell that it's not actually snow and that it is sand, if you, you know, at least knowing this information. So, um, yeah, so 
it does it doesn't look so good to be honest i feel like maybe they should have found another cold place to do the film so the problem is they then um yeah so the opening scene was actually filmed in a desert and then they altered it to look like snow then they used climate change in the film as a way to kind of explain away the fact that for the rest of the movie there's pretty much no snow uh, <laughs> which you know at that point, they were kind of able to get away with it because it's supposed to be Canada. And, you know, Canada has some areas that there isn't a ton of snow all the time. So, and the fact that they kind of mainly stayed in like the research facility area actually helped as well. So you kind of forget about that. But the beginning is just, it's so obviously bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can tell it wasn't actually shot in the snow. Yeah. Uh, but the first emergence of the Graboid is really, really cool. That's the biggest payoff. That's the initial payoff where he comes, you know, flying out of the snow uh, and is like spinning as he's coming out. It looks good. And the CG actually looks good on the Graboids and Ass Blasters in this film. So um, I like that aspect of it. Uh, other than that, yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, I, I love the Graboids like jumping out of the ground. That is a cool thing. And now Gummer runs the convenience store like Walter Chang did. He's running Walter Chang's convenience store. I did like that touch in this film. I thought that was a fun, cool kind of uh, callback to the very beginning because uh, everyone liked Walter Chang in the first one, I assume, because I did. Um, so the fact that Bert's there, he's actually kind of strapped for cash and that's it seems is one of the main reasons he's running that convenience store, um, which puts him right back in the same situation that we're so familiar with with these Tremors films is Bert or someone, because it was Earl in the second one, needs money. They're strapped for cash. So what time is it? It's Graboid killing time for money, of course. Although, well, okay, he didn't, I mean, he didn't really get paid in the end. He just got an exemption from the IRS and got his property back because... Obviously, in the beginning of this, the IRS shows up, and there is no worse nightmare for Burt Gummer than the IRS showing up and saying, government is seizing your property. Him being one of the people who most hates the government in film, period. Uh, so I thought that was kind of funny that that's how it started while he's working at this convenience store trying to get his money, money back, basically. Uh, the uh, ongoing joke in the beginning, well, it happened like a few times, of him like changing teams, and he's like, no, I just changed my hat. Dumb. Which, you know, this kind of speaks to um, the script writing, like I was saying. The script writing is not that good, and uh, especially the dialogue. The dialogue is weak. A lot of the what are supposed to be comedic moments are not funny at all. They totally miss the mark. And uh, the I feel like the hat thing is, is like the first thing in the film where you're just like, Ugh, this is supposed to be like funny? And that gave me a bad feeling from that point, and it didn't get any better for, for the comedic aspects. There were a few small moments in it where I actually was like, oh, that was actually kind of funny. For the most part, no. The funny stuff was not funny. Um, in the beginning, I kind of thought that like the flashback type things that Bert was having when he was sleeping on the roof of the convenience store. I thought that was kind of like a PTSD type thing, and they were going to approach the film from that angle. That could have been interesting. But instead, they made it some sort of, like, psychic link with the Graboids or something because he was infected because in the third movie, here's a reference to the third movie, he was eaten by one and went through its gastrointestinal system until he was cut out. Um, I Dumb like dumb like the PTSD aspect of it could have been really interesting and you could have made a film that's not just fun and funny you could have made a film that's also kind of poignant now we decided not to go down that road <laughs> uh yeah yeah I wrote down Travis seems too dialed up in this one he's hyper and annoying and the back and forth between he and Bert is over the top and it goes on too long I cannot say that enough that is one of the worst parts of this film the introduction of the ass blaster to Bert was actually a really good one in the beginning when they're flying into this research facility and the ass blaster is flying in the air and you're like, ooh, man, how is this going to end? That was interesting. That was a good way to kind of get things going. And then the fact that it just like beefs it right into the propeller and it's just like pfft, graboid guts all over. Cool. I, I, I like that. 
I just wrote, Val and Rhonda's daughter? <sighs> That's stupidity. Uh, the fact that this researcher who calls up Bert to come and kill the Graboids is the daughter of Val and Rhonda, Val and Rhonda from the first film, um, it, it's a stretch to try and play on the nostalgia of the series, and it doesn't work. It's dumb. And plus the fact that they already did the thing with Bert Gummer's son in Travis. That and that was done okay. That was fine. But when you're gonna go down the road again of here's another offspring from the first movie. No. No. Let's let let's just not. It's dumb. Plus, the actress was terrible. And that's the other thing is Outside of Jamie Kennedy, for the most part, and uh, Michael Gross, the acting in this is bad. It's probably the worst it's been in this whole franchise. So, boo to that. Uh, it was only a matter of time before the Graboids took to water, because there is that moment when they're in a water setting and someone gets nailed by a Graboid. That was the only thing kind of the franchise was really missing, which hopefully we see kind of more of that in the Island Fury one, number seven, that would be really cool for them to kind of explore them kind of being like sharks. Because if people don't, if people don't remember, if you didn't see my uh, review on the first Tremors, uh, which you should go check it out. I have all of them now. Um, it The initial concept of the Tremor, or uh, sorry, of the Graboids was supposed to be like sharks. Like they were supposed to be the oldest, most ancient life forms, predators, but for land instead of, you know. So they were to land what the sharks were to the ocean so to take the graboids to water would be really really interesting and they do it briefly in here and i thought they were going to do more of it but they didn't so hopefully that happens for the next one the infection of bert by the graboid graboid is kind of an interesting tie back to the third one but it ends up not really working out because they needed to kind of develop that a little bit more and like i said i would have liked if they went down like the ptsd route more it would have been way more interesting um, it feels like they they do the infection thing, but they don't really like flesh it out a whole lot. It's just like this is some sort of like half cooked concept. Let's there it is. Okay, uh, I'm happiest when I'm seeing graboid goo flying, and there's just not enough of that in this film. Now, don't get me wrong; the moments when the graboid goo is flying are nice. They do a good job with it, especially the one where it, uh, it hits the electri electrified fence underground and there's like that giant explosion from underground that comes up and it's like a geyser of graboid guts. That is probably my favorite part of the film, to be honest. Um, and they do have some other good moments uh, of that stuff, but there just wasn't enough. There just wasn't enough graboid death, in my opinion, and guts that come along with that death. Uh, the romance between the scientists and Travis is eye roll inducing. They don't, they didn't hit it as hard as I thought they were going to, but the amount that they put in there was still too much. It's dumb. It's cliche. It doesn't have any part in this story. It just, let's not, you know what I mean? It's the most cliche writing. It's stupid. We don't need it. It detracts from what we're here for. Fun killing graboids. Let's, let's focus on that. And the fact that this is one of the worst plot holes the woman who wouldn't get rid of her pants, this do, this uh, scientist, wouldn't let her pants go because when the Graboid's pulling on it and she's going to die and Travis is saying, take off your pants, and she says, no, because I don't have underwear on. That's not realistic. Nobody in that situation would be like, oh, no, I want to keep my pants on because I don't have underwear. You're going to die. So this is what I'm talking about. The writing is not there. It is not there for this. And actually, the other thing to point out is that none of these people really seem to be afraid of the Graboids at all. You know, I understand Bert and Travis not really being afraid of the Graboids because they've dealt with them before, plenty of times before. But everyone else should have had some degree of fear or apprehension. It just seems like they show up, uh, Travis and Bert show up, and everyone's all gung-ho, like, let's go kill these things that, you know we don't think are dangerous at all. Like that's the way they're treating it. And it doesn't feel realistic. It's, it, it's weird. It's, it's dumb. It's bad writing. Um, yeah. So, but really that's kind of all I have to say about the actual events of the film. Like that, you can't say a whole lot, not a whole lot actually feels like it happens. And I've been watching all these movies with my wife and she said towards the end of the film, she was like, it feels so random. 
that like they're just doing all these things randomly and it's not really cohesive and i agree with her on that assessment like it doesn't feel cohesive it does seem like they're kind of jumping from thing to thing to thing it's just like a bunch of random thoughts that went down on the script page and it just doesn't it doesn't work although i you know i like the idea of them like trapping the graboid the way they trap the graboid but um i don't know just um yeah uh so the acting in this is not good the dialogue is poor to boot i mean those two things together are really gonna hinder a film a lot of the intended comedy doesn't work yep it's pretty obvious they were trying to position travis to take over the gummer mantle because of his increased leadership role which is really obvious in this and the line that was in the very beginning of it when Travis says that or, or when Bert says that Travis is trying to be the heir apparent um that's kind of the foreshadowing of where things are going to go and then when we get to the point where you know Bert's laid up and uh Travis puts all his actual gear on and kind of looks a bit like Bert it becomes very 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 obvious that that is where they're trying to go saying this could be the new Bert Gummer I hope not I think they should just kill the films instead after that um yeah the the plan to catch let me go back to the very end of this the plan to catch the graboid was actually really far-fetched and ridiculous the idea of catching the graboid was fine and they could have done that but the way they did the plan it was so convoluted and everything had to be 100 exact and it just worked out that way and the graboid had to react exactly how they thought it would you know, it's taking the aspect out of the Graboid that is they are smart. And they learn. And that's in the other films. And that's, for some reason, not really in this film. So, um, yeah, it just screws with a lot of stuff. Uh, once the Graboid's caught, that's kind of a cool aspect. But how they do it is unbelievably dumb. Um, the scene of Travis crawling into the Graboid's mouth, though, that was cool. It looked really good the way it was shot. And it looked gross, which is important for something like that. Because you assume it would be very gross. Um, and in the end, I do like how Bert kind of puts one over on the fed be feds because he's like, oh, here's your uh, graboid that you could use as a bioweapon. Uh, now I need my stuff. Oh, everything's signed, sealed, delivered. Good. Uh, now I'm going to kill this thing. And he has the, the little, you know, RC plane fly in and they blow up the graboid. And there's more graboid guts, which is great. But um, yeah, so there are a few fun moments in the film, but overall... Not good. There's a lot working against it. Not funny when it's supposed to be funny. Script writing's just poor. The acting's poor. The dialogue's really poor. And it feels random. So, uh, yeah. Uh, one of the worst fil worst films of the series. Which, you know, people would assume that for the, the sixth film. But number five was pretty good. Like, I enjoyed that one. So, anyway, uh, with a possible five stars at play in here. with a With a half star in play. Uh, I'm going to give it a one star rating. This is not a very good film. There's a little bit of fun, but not very good. But anyway, thanks for checking out this review. Put some comments down there. Let me know your thoughts on Tremor 6, A Cold Day in Hell. And uh, I will be doing the review for Island Fury when that comes out. So that will be awesome. Uh, hit that subscribe for me real quick. Uh, it's the best way to repay me for doing these videos because I'm not making money or anything. Um, and it literally takes you a second. If you're already subscribed, though, hit that thumbs up just so I know you're still watching. But thanks for checking this out, and until next time, keep it brutal.